Hey everyone, this is Eric with Project EKP. I'm showcasing a new product today. This is the exhaust header heat shield for the 2JZ NA. This is tailored for the IS300 because of this particular cutout here to avoid some ABS stuff, but this could be used on other chassis with the 2JZ NA engine. This is only for the NA because uh, this would hit the turbo if you were to have a turbo build. So what comes in the package will be the heat shield itself, um, a hex bolt for mounting, there are some shims required, and then some nuts that will kind of mate with that. This is made out of 5052 aluminum, which is really good for corrosive resistance and cost. It is also lightweight. This is a pretty sturdy heat shield because I really want to minimize any flex. This is a cantilevered design, as you can see. It mounts on this flange up here and everything hangs off the end. So stiffness was really in mind with choosing the thickness of the material and the way it's designed using this riveted gusset design. So one thing I really wanted to make sure with this was to keep temperatures down. Keep temperatures down on the intake, the APPS, which fails all the time from heat cycling, the motors, the plastics just get destroyed. As you can see, this is completely broken. This is just from heat connectors. So a lot of this could be prevented with the heat shield. Oh, sorry, the intake tubing as well. Um, just keeping those temperatures down, having the heat shield absorb the heat rather than all the other components. So let's go ahead and show you guys how to install this thing. It's not that difficult. First, we'll start with the tools. So for tools, um, this is pretty standard on any uh, toolbox, but uh, you'll need a 3 8 ratchet. You'll need a two or three inch extension, um, a 14 millimeter socket, a 12 millimeter socket. I recommend a deep one for the 12, um, a 13 millimeter socket. For the 14 millimeter socket, make sure it's a, a shallow or a medium in length. Don't, make, don't use a deep well and then a 3 8 uh, U-joint. All right, so at the vehicle, first thing you need to remove is the intake tube here. So I went ahead and did that off camera, put that to the side. You can lay it on top of your throttle body. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is remove the four bolts that hold the throttle body butterfly valve support. So it's this one here, this one here, and there's one down there, and then one on the opposite side right here. So those are 12 millimeters. All right, after you take those off, go ahead and take the bracket and just kind of flip it over and put it kind of out and up. You can zip tie it up if you like, um, but just get it out of the way. Next thing we're gonna do is take apart the fastener that is right here. So we have this heater hose here, okay? There's a fastener down below. It is a 14 millimeter hex head right there. So we're gonna undo that. So some tips on how to remove that. First, get your 3 8 and your short socket, or a medium, 14 millimeter, in this configuration. And then take the heater hose and pop it out of the top of the bracket like this. There we go. So lift that up. And then you can go ahead and get your wrench and then get that on there. You can see now I have much easier access to that bolt. So see, and now we're just gonna to to work that off. All right, so now that I cracked that loose, one really important step is go ahead and start unthreading it, but don't unthread it all the way. Do not unthread it all the way. Okay, back it out several turns so that this bracket is loose, but we're not gonna remove the bolt. It's a lot more difficult to put the bolt back in. And with the design of this heat shield, you shouldn't have to do it. So get it backed out, there we go. Make sure there's like two to three threads engaged. And this bracket should be able to slide now on that bolt. That is what you want. Okay, good, so go, let's go ahead and get the heat shield. Alrighty, so first things first, go ahead and grab your lower shim kit and nut kit, number two. We're gonna need the two shims. These are these thick looking washers that are made of aluminum right down here. Not the thin ones, but the thick ones. They're 90,000 thick. We're gonna go ahead and get those out of the bag. Okay, this is a really important step. Right, and we're gonna go ahead and slip them on the studs for the lower throttle body bracket that we took off earlier. So put one here, and then put one on the other side. This is because the interface right here is actually a different height than this one here. So we want to make sure that everything is nice and um, level when you're bolting it up. So that's why we need the shims. So after you've done that, you can put the shim kit to the side and we'll get to that to the rest of the fasteners later. Now, for installing the heat shield, go ahead 
and you're actually gonna load it in vertically. So let me zoom out a little bit. We're gonna load it in vertically, move this heater hose out of the way and just slide it down like this, okay? And then move this bracket up out of the way and then shift it towards the engine. Okay, there we go. So now one thing we need to do is now we need to feed the back slot into that bolt that we backed out. Okay, let's see if I can move that, there we go. So we have that slot back there. We're gonna slide it in. It's gonna be behind this bracket here. Okay, it's gonna be behind it. So let me go ahead and try to set the camera up to show that. So what we're doing is you see that bolt's in there and we're sliding it behind the bracket. So let's see if I can shift it forward here. There we go, just like that. And there's a little tang on the bracket itself that you're gonna make sure it engages into the slot in there. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of show how it looks once it's all installed. So yeah, everything's lined up. And then now I can push the heat shield onto the studs like that. And then the bracket here, there'll be a little tang, it's a little dog leg tang. It's gonna go into the slot. That's how you know it's in there properly. So you can let that drop down now. It should be fine. So now we're gonna go ahead and get, go ahead and get your hex bolt. This is gonna go into this fastener hole here. This will set the alignment for the whole heat shield. So go ahead and get that in there. Okay, I just tightened that off camera, hand tight. We'll get the final torque at the end of the video. So now we wanna get upper shim kit number one. Okay, upper shim kit number one. Go ahead and empty that out into your hand. And we're gonna put these shims onto this stud here on the upper part of that bracket that supports the throttle body. So we'll go ahead and get two of them and slip it on the right stud right there. And then get the other two and slip it on the other side. And then that should look like that, okay? And then now we could then put the throttle body support bracket on, like how it goes from factory, just onto the studs, just like that. And then now this is where we could come back to the lower shim kit and nut number two. So we have a nut and a washer. So we're gonna go ahead and do the bottom studs here first. You can see my fingers pointing to that. So we'll go ahead and throw those on. This is where you're gonna need your 13 millimeter socket. So we'll go ahead and put the washers. Be careful you don't drop these. And then we'll put the nut on and we'll do the, I'll do the same thing for the uh, back side. All right, for the bottom fasteners, we will use our 13 millimeter socket and torque it to 150 inch pounds. That's 150 inch pounds. So make sure you do that. Um, it's a very low torque, so it's inch pounds, 150 inch pounds. If you wanna know the foot pounds, divide that by 12. So go ahead and torque that up on both sides. I already torqued it off camera. And then now get your 12 millimeter socket. And we're gonna torque these ones up here to 15 foot pounds. That's 15 foot pounds, which is about 180 inch pounds. Okay, so I'm gonna adjust my torque wrench. It's 180 inch pounds. There we go. Done. Next, we're gonna go ahead and torque this fastener here. So let me get my torque wrench. All right, so go ahead and get your 14 millimeter socket and torque this to 33 foot-pounds. That's 33 foot-pounds. Good. And now it's gonna be the same torque for the fastener in the back that we took off. So one little tip to get to that is I simply take this joint here, and then, sorry, I'm, this name is escaping me, I don't know why and then go ahead and do that. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get to the one back there. My suggestion is to lift this hose up and then get to that. So first hand tight it as much as you can. Here, I'll actually take it using the socket. 
And so what I'll do is I'll first hand tight it by lifting this hose up and then kind of threading that on with the uh, socket attachment, which kind of hard to see, but that's what I'm doing there. Once that's fully seated, then I'll take the torque wrench and you can see I'll have access to the extension right there and torque that down. So I'm gonna do that off camera since it's gonna be hard, a little hard to show on camera. All right, so I went ahead and torqued that up down there. Um, just make sure you attach this hose back to the bracket, the electrical thing, clip that back on there. And there you go, you are finished. You can see that it's nice and stiff. There's no rattling. It shouldn't have any vibration. It should be very, very stiff, almost rock hard. If that's the case, all the fasteners are torqued properly and you installed it correctly, and now you're good to go. Um, just don't forget to put your intake tube back on and enjoy. So hope you found that video helpful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message me, email me, whatever. I'll be there for you to help. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks for your business. Thanks, have a nice day, bye.